In 1958, the nuclear-powered submarine USS Nautilus crossed the North Pole under the ice, becoming the first submarine in human history to reach that point alone. The keel of the Nautilus was laid down by Harry Truman at the General Dynamics Electric Boat Division in Connecticut on June 14, 1952. She was launched on the Thames River on January 21, 1954. Nautilus was commissioned on September 30th of the same year under the command of Navy Commander Eugene Wilkinson. After commissioning, she remained in the dock for further construction and testing. On the morning of January 17, 1955, at 11 o'clock in the morning, the first commander of the Nautilus ordered all ropes to be cast off. The submarine headed south for a trial run. Fully submerged, she traveled 2,000 kilometers from New London to San Juan, Puerto Rico, covering 2,200 kilometers in less than 90 hours. At the time, it was the longest continuous speed submarine voyage ever recorded. From 1955 to 1907, Nautilus continued to be used to study the effects of increasing underwater speed and duration. In May, she traveled to the Pacific coast to participate in shore exercises and fleet home run, a fleet exercise designed to familiarize Pacific fleet units with the capabilities of nuclear-powered submarines. Nautilus returned to Connecticut and once again embarked on her maiden voyage of 1,500 miles under the polar pack ice. It then headed to the Eastern Atlantic to participate in NATO exercises and to visit various British and French ports where it was inspected by military personnel from those countries. She then returned to New London, underwent maintenance, and then conducted littoral operations. In response to the development of missile weapons in the USSR and the launch of Sputnik, U.S. President Eisenhower ordered a nuclear submarine expedition to northern latitudes to reach the North Pole and demonstrate the capabilities of a new class of submarines for which ballistic missiles were already being developed. On April 25, 1958, the Nautilus, commanded by William Anderson, set sail from the west coast of the United States. After calling at San Diego, San Francisco, and Seattle, the sub began its historic voyage dubbed Operation Sunshine, on June 9th. On June 19th, the submarine passed through Bering Strait into the Chukchi Sea, but heavy ice conditions in the shallow waters prevented it from proceeding, and it was forced to turn back, arriving at Pearl Harbor on June 28th. On July 23rd of that year, the Nautilus set course north again. On August 1st, the boat entered the Barrow Submarine Canyon off the northern coast of Alaska and arrived at the point of the geographic North Pole at 11 a.m. on August 3rd. The ability to navigate at extremely high latitudes without taking off was provided by the N6A-1 inertial navigation system developed by North American Aviation and used in the SM-64 Navajo cruise missiles. This system was installed on the submarines Nautilus and Skate after successful tests on the USS Compass Island in 1957. After passing the North Pole, Nautilus continued to move, passing under the ice 2,200 kilometers in 96 hours, surfacing off the northeast coast of Greenland. This voyage was a major boost for America as the Soviet Union had recently launched Sputnik but did not have a nuclear submarine of its own. In a speech announcing the voyage, the president mentioned that nuclear-powered cargo submarines might one day use the route for trade. As the Nautilus headed south from Greenland, a helicopter airlifted Commander Anderson to join the transport to Washington. At a White House ceremony on August 8th, President Eisenhower presented him with the Legion of Merit and announced that the crew had been awarded the Presidential Unit Citation. For the remainder of the year, Nautilus operated from her home port of New London. In 1958, a seawater leak was discovered inside the hull. The leak occurred in the engine room because the condenser of the main steam turbine did not have the required corrosion resistance. The leak could have caused the electrical system to fail. 
Early in the year 1959, Nautilus arrived at the main Navy Yard for her first complete overhaul. The overhaul was followed by a refit, and she left New London on October 24th for her first deployment with the 6th Fleet in the Mediterranean, returning to her home port on December 16. On May 2, 1966, Nautilus returned to her home port to resume operations with the Atlantic Fleet, traveling some 560,000 kilometers during the month. On November 10, she collided with the aircraft carrier USS Essex while conducting exercises in shallow water. The carrier suffered an underwater breach but remained afloat. The submarine sustained heavy damage to her deckhouse but was not disabled and went to base for repairs. After repairs in Portsmouth, she conducted exercises off the southeast coast. She returned to New London in December, 1968, and operated with Submarine Squadron 10 for most of the remainder of her career. On April 9, 1979, the submarine departed Connecticut on her final voyage under the command of Richard Riddell. She arrived at the Mare Island Naval Shipyard in California on May 26, 1979, the last day of her voyage. Nautilus was decommissioned and removed from the Naval Vessel Register on March 3, 1980. Toward the end of her service, the sub's hull and sails vibrated so much that sonar became ineffective at speeds above four knots. Since the creation of noise is highly undesirable, this made the boat vulnerable to sonar detection. The lessons learned from this problem were applied to later nuclear-powered submarines. In 2002, the ship underwent a five-month preservation at Electric Boat, at a cost of about $5 million at the time. The Nautilus now serves as a submarine history museum operated by the Naval History and Heritage Command. It attracts approximately 250,000 visitors annually to its current berth near the Naval Submarine Base in New London.